Hey guys, what's up? It's Casual Thursday, Visual Novel Day! Today I would like to play a game called Melos, developed by Skarn, illustrated by Katza. Now, Melos is a short interactive story about romance, poetry, honesty in this world at the meeting point between myth and history. Yeah! Now, this is one of the Yuri Game Jam 2015 entries, and I was like, you know, this kind of look unique, yeah! And it's about Greek mythology too. I mean, I'm not really a uh, good with poetry and such, but I am still interested in it. So, I was like, why the hell not? Yeah. All right. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, are they doing rock, paper, scissors right now? I, I don't even. Anyway, yeah, let's go. Honesty, eh? All right, let's go. Whoa. Oh, is that the Greek uh, language on the top? That's cool. One of the throne of many hues, immortal Aphrodite. Aphrodite, I mean, child of Zeus, weaving wiles. I beg you not to subdue my spirit queen with pain of sorrow. I remember that morning on the road. What? I finally managed to have her talk a little about her past. For a second, for a few words, she opened the door of her heart to me, and I felt like I had unlock the path to Elysium. But come, if ever before having heard my voice from far away, you listened, and leaving your father's golden home you came. I remember that afternoon in that pond. We bathed together, not for the first time nor the last, but from the moment onwards, I was suddenly well aware of our common nudity, of our physical closeness. In your chariot yoked with swift, lovely sorrow, sparrows, I mean, bring you over the dark earth, thick feathered wings swirling down from the sky through midair. I remember that evening, in a tavern overflowing with people. Our table was crowded, but that did not bother her. Actually, she was smiling, joking, flirting with the man next seat. I kept my best polite face, but deep inside my chest, the Infernal fire of jealousy and a chilling wind of despair were battling each other. Arriving quickly, you, blessed one, with a smile on your unaging face, asking again what have I suffered and why am I calling again? I can't remember that night in a particular desolate region. We had set up camp in a small grove. It was summer. It was hot. So we decided to sleep under the stars. She indeed did sleep. As for myself, I... I spent the entire night contemplating her, watching the slow up and down on her bust as she quietly breathes. And in my wild heart that did I most wish to happen to me, again, who must I persuade back into the harness of your love? Safbo. Who wrongs you? I remember our first encounter. I knew nothing of her expect of her skills with the spear and the snare. She was certainly a fugitive on the run from the authorities. A potential thief, bandit, murderer. Yet I still entrust my safety to her. Out of necessity, I tried to convince myself then. But perhaps already, unconsciously, under the whispers of some Malicious goddess. Goddess, I mean. For it she flees, soon she'll pursue. She doesn't accept gifts, but she'll give. If not now loving, soon she'll love even against her will. I remember our last discussion. We were waiting outside the stadium, before dawn, before this long day of festivity starts, more daring than usual. I had not so subtly directed the conversation on the various interpretation of my repertoire workers' works, I mean, and was watching her closely, attentive to any sign, any reaction which could have given me hope, I saw none. Come to me now again. Release me from this pain. Everything my spirit longs to have fulfilled. Fulfill. And you be my ally. Ally, I mean, goddamn. 
I remember those or these moments and many others, small and big, casual and special, even precious little breaks of the time I spent with her. I remember, and I am happy. I remember, I am sad. Woo! Yo, this looks really unique and nice. Yeah, a final storm, and the last note escaped the lyric. Leary rises into the air, rings through the night. In its morning, it echoes the end of the song. It is answered with applause and cheers. About twenty per persons noisily show their appreciation of this recital of Sapo's classic. I join them as well, if only to be polite. Secretly, I am unconvinced and. Not alone. When I played the exact same song on the same rostrum for the same audience about an hour ago, the public response was far more enthusiastic. Even if the night has only grown darker and colder since, it's obvious this show is subpar. Yet, despite the absence of any real passion in the voice, the technical mistake when handling the lyre, and even a few distorted lines, I can't help but be moved by this music. The Hymn of Aphrodite is a powerful piece, one people expect and enjoy, one I have played many times in the past, and that I will probably play many times in the future too. But for several months now, I have been unable to hum its melody without picturing a specific face, without imagining a certain pair of beautiful eyes looking at me while I'm singing. Without dreaming about one unique person listening to the words between the lines and understanding the special meaning this song has for me, and this is but the most harmless of my recent quirks. I have turned obsessive, possessive. I sleep little and badly. Cannot bear the shortest of separations. Constantly observing her and overinterrupting or interpreting. Each and every of her words and actions, I do my best to hide it. And as a professional artist trained to save face and smile in all circumstances, I'm pretty sure I have managed to keep the mask of sanity and happiness on until now. But deep inside, I'm crumbling. I'm on the verge of breaking. At the gates of madness, the flames are in me. They want to go out, but I keep them locked inside. And so they consume my soul, and more than the passion itself, it's the silence which is killing me. I haven't told anyone, nor her, nor any other person, to be sure this would not reach her ears somehow. In fear of the consequences of such reveal, I have observed her for days and nights. Yet I never found a single hint that she may feel about me the same way that I feel about her. But I have grasped enough to understand she was born in a culture of power and steel, which does not value highly romance, a world where reproduction takes precedence over proper love, and that she still lives by the spirit of her education, if not by its customs. And I'm afraid, very afraid, of what will happen when she will discover my passion, my desire, afraid of bewilderment. Afraid of rejection, afraid of fear, afraid of anger, afraid this will break our special relationship, afraid that by wanting too much of her, I will lose her whole. As a background noise of my worries, the man of the scene starts playing. I recognize a composition from Alcaeus, a supposedly appropriate answer to the last piece. As he was Sappho's senior and rival, but a poor idea in the end, as a stanza I hear simply cannot compare to the majesty of Sappho's text. She was the uncontested, or uncontested, I mean, tenth muse, and the artistic world still mourns her death a couple of decades ago. The naggy melody, nonetheless, calms, calms, calms me down a little. I review my options. This afternoon, I took part in one of the main events of the festival in the city theater, under the gaze of hundreds of people. A grand contest of poetry, in whom many 
artist tried their luck, including the one distracting us right now. Triumphing is such a competition and usually a life's goal for a singer, but this was not my main concern this year. However, I did plan my day with an extreme precision. As soon as my early and obli obligatory performance ended, I retreated back to the shadows, discreetly, discreetly, I mean, escaped the theater to hide myself in the nearby woods. Then I sat on the ground of the sunny clearing, alone, while the whole city was directly or indirectly focused on the festival. From the shouting people on the theater's tiers to the humps, humblest food vendor, to think, to think far away from the constant noise and movement of the ordinary life, to think without the weight of exhaustion and the terrors of the night overtaking me. And after a few hours, when I knew I couldn't hide or flee anymore, I made my decision. It's this night, or never. Oh! The moment couldn't be more perfect. Today, the city is celebrating Aphrodite. Today, we both shone in our own specialty, proved ourselves to the world, reminded it we exist by our own rights. Now, her mood should be at its best, on the edge of ecstasy. Ecstasy! If I don't talk to her this night, I know I will never have enough will to do it again. That with my mouth will stay shut and my heart closed. So, I just need to stand up, walk away from this quiet corner of the property where a few artists and enthusiasts gathered for some impromptu rehearsals. Find her in a crowd, take her aside, and open my heart to her. As simple as that. Okay! Yo, I really love the writing style. Fuck! Anyway, uh... What should I do? Should I go for it? Wait, we're in Greek, right? Yeah, back in those days. Ah, shit. Should I go for it? Or should I wait? It is the time, right? It's the day of the Aphrodite. You know what, girl? Go for it. Yeah. I mean, it is the day, right? Of Aphrodite? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Go for it, girl! I raise my head. Before me, the artist is almost done. And soon, a new volunteer will take his place. I could even... Or it could even be me if I wanted to. I look on my own leer, waiting impatiently in his bag at my side. On my left, within arm's reach, I notice a few appetizer and drinks. I picked an olive, make it roll upon my palm. On my right, a group of people are having a hearty discussion about the last musical trends. Classicus versus moderns, as usual, but interesting nonetheless. Stay or go? For the music, right? Think, think, think. Should I stay or should I go? Is this... Uh, wait, okay. What? Okay, hold on. What does she mean? Okay, on the left there's an olive that she's rolling, right? And on the right there's people who's talking about the music of the classical versus modern, right? That's what the text said, I believe, if I remember, so... What does this mean? Is this the time should I go? And show my... Or should I wait? Is, is this not the time yet? <sighs> ah, fuck. Is she here though? That's the question. As an audience? Let's move forward. Let's, yeah. Yeah. I forced myself to took at the nearby exit, just a few steps away. 
could as well be beyond the pillars of Hercules. Huh? Hercules, I mean. I'm pitifully delaying, trying to find something to do, anything to push back the moment. Even the time I'm currently using to think about this is a form of temporizing, yeah? I lash myself mentally. It would be easy to postpone forever, like a bad poet always rescheduling to tomorrow, the writing of their masterpiece, and finally passing away with a blank page pressing against their chest, easy and infinitely regretful. Ah. I gather my will. I clench my teeth. I rise. My knees are shaking like a set of knuckle bones. I'm shivering more than an old lady. Nonetheless, I stumble on the short distance separating me from the main building. With each step, my footing is more secure, my pace more stable. Not that I'm less afraid, but once you jump into the water, you have no other choice than to swim or sink. I advance quickly through the many rooms of the building, getting around stepping over the many re revelers crossing my path with a consummate skill. I have worked at many similar parties before, and experience taught me how to move with ease despite the chaotic crowd. I make a breach through human walls with a smile and gentle but firm arm. I adroitly avoid stepping on discarded leftovers and other unsavory things, nicely dismiss people asking for a song. While my reflexes alone handle my movement and keep my pace, I gaze at every single person, my sight jumping from face to face, haunting the only prey worth it. A hundred different eyes meet mine, but not the ones I desire, until they finally lock onto perfection. They may right now display the slight luster simple, symptomatic of the important consumption of alcohol, but they still shine with twin suns. The reflected flames of the candles dance upon a dark and brown ocean, shifting with the emotions of their own. Enlarged from the surprise of the sudden encounter, contracted as she observes the intruder, sparkling when she recognizes me. She half rises, hemmed in her movements by the food plate on her knees, but I stopped her with the sign of the hand and sit by her side at the extremity of the narrow bench. Pushing her a little, she holds back a grin and I show a mischievous smile. Her military mind had naturally chosen a position from which she could have easily retreated, an advantage I just negated, cutting her way out. From so close, it's obvious I'm half a head taller than her, which never ends to surprise me. She looks big in everyday life, thanks to her has strong confidence and athletic build, but it is actually pretty average when using factual measurements. My shoulder brushes against her own, my robe touching the skin left nude on that place by her old style of clothing. Some judge it's barbaric, she judged it practical. I judge it's sexy yes. Oh! Um... Uh, and is that an R or is that a T? Antiope, Antiope. I think. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not really that. Uh, I don't really remember the Greek history and mythology stuff too well. Since yeah, it's it's been so long. Sorry, guys. And uh, shit, voice. Uh, Ambroisa, where have you been? I looked after you when the party started, but you were nowhere to be found. Her voice returns to me to the real world. What? Sort of. Before answering, I savor my own name in her mouth like it is the divine nectar it refers to. She pronounces it with a slight but unmissable accent, giving in a strange sonority unique to her, a cute quirk I have learned to enjoy. On the opposite side, despite my talent as a singer, I'm unable to breathe proper life in her own name. I pronounce it perfectly. But it sounds so bland when I say it. While it should ring like the thunder in the summer sky. Anti Antiope. Is that how you pronounce that shit? Sorry, hold on. Andiope. 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 
Alright, on the open! Hopefully that's right, I mean that's how it sounds like in a... Yeah, anyway, a warrior named... Or a warrior name, an Amazon name, a mythical name, yet one escaping me as her barrier escapes me. She cocks an eyebrow at me, not answering her mundane question, and I break the daydreaming once more. I change topic or remain silent. <sighs> change topic to what? Or remain silent. Uh, let's, let's let's be a little quiet. Or should I be a talkative talkative person? Nah, 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 nah. Let's remain silent, yeah. Or change topic. Yeah, let's let's be let's remain silent for now, yeah. I sincerely think about outgoing the truth. I came there for this. To stop hiding. But now that we were face to face, my lips are sealed. I don't want to say a lie. As small as it could be, but still cannot open up. So I stay silent, dismissing the question with a mysterious smile and a wave of the hand. She does not insist. Antiope is extremely protective of, of her own personal space and respects the one of others with the same might. She hands me a bunch of pastries wrapped in a small piece of fabric. I accept one and start eating slowly, with little bites, savoring the moment far more than the cake. As for her, she devours them one by one in a single mouthful, each in a remark that she has piled up enough food to fit a whole family. Following my glance, she, dis she display a all-teeth-out smile. Eat like a wolf, as much as you can while you can. So to be ready for when you will have nothing to eat. Typical, she knows the seemingly needless list of rules. Proverbs, little tales referring to carnivorous animals and survival. This one is actually pretty tame compared to the bloody, dark, and depressing streams of advice she normally comes out with. And she does live by them. Always stuffing herself to the limit each time the food is free. It's a wonder how she keeps her physique. Although her stupidly hard and harsh daily routine probably helps a lot. It is yet another habit one could find ridiculous at first, but touching once you realize it has been forcefully implemented in her, a scar from a childhood she refused to talk about. After finishing her first plate, she pours herself a cup of wine, then offers me one. The alcohol is a local brew, and even if it has been heavily watered down, the powerful smell is enough for me to understand how potent it still is. Yeah, let's get drunk. Why the fuck not? I take a sip. As suspected, the wine is quite pure but good. I take my time to finish my cup while Antiope devours what looks like a meat pie. The alcohol shouldn't have time or shouldn't have had the time to kick in so quickly, but I still feel a little bolder after the last drop. I put back the empty recipient on the table with more energy than I planned to and a clap sound attracts Antiope's attention. She points out the bottle in an obvious silent question. Shit! Uh... Okay, All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, okay. I cannot get too drunk, you know what I'm saying? You know, drinking is fine. But you gotta know your limits, you know, guys? So... She's getting a little... Black back. Okay. I don't wanna black out. You know? End up fucking up shit, so... Fuck it. Let's get drunk, girl. Yeah.